Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are painting. I'm gonna be painting S crank. I'm going to do a 3D pattern. And uh, to let you guys know on the giveaway, it's not this weekend, it's next weekend, it'll be done. And uh, one of you who commented, subscribed, and liked the video will win the giveaway. We haven't made it quite to 50 likes, and I'm not sure we're going to make it. Uh, if we do, I'll give away two crankbaits. If we don't, I'm only giving away that one. Alright, but on to painting. I'm going to get some black paint. Put her on in there. She... Mix it up, reduce it real nice. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna give it a black base coat so that we can do the pattern that I wanna do. Nice black base coat, like so. Actually, what I'm gonna do, hold on, give me a minute, I wanna do something. Excuse me. Alright. Now I gotta clean out my airbrush. <clears throat> Hold on guys, I'm trying to do something real quick.
Hey guys, real quick, I want to say, uh, I'm giving a shout out to a Guy with the GoPro Fishing Show. Go check him out on YouTube. He does fishing videos. He does some real quality videos too. And uh, I just want to give him a little shout out because I like watching what he does, and I think it's a pretty good thing he's got going on. Okay. Alright, I'm coming back to paint now. Hopefully, uh... Yeah, it's about dried. Let me air dry. Alright, let me, uh... Dry them real quick. I wanna make sure... You wanna make sure when you're painting your base coat is completely dry. If it's not completely dry, it can bleed into your other colors and you don't really want that. Also, I'm gonna be putting stenciling on the bait. And if you don't have it completely dried, it won't work out too well. Especially, like, normally what you'll have as a base coat is either going to be white or black. Either one, you have to make sure it's completely dry before you paint onto it. Uh, but sometimes if you're feeling lazy with it, like, I rarely do this, but uh, sometimes if I have a white base coat, it won't be completely dry. But if I'm painting with light colors... I will uh, keep on painting over it and it won't really matter. But if you're using black, which is like the darkest color you get, you don't want it to bleed through. It won't be good. Especially if you're trying to sell, you're not, nobody's going to want a bait that is messed up. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I have stenciling like that. Oh, here it is. All right. Gotta lift up the tripod, boom. All right, here's gonna be my stenciling I'm gonna put over it. I'm gonna have to spray two colors to get the pattern I want. First, I'm gonna have to spray white, and then over top of the white, I am going to have to spray uh, the green I want. Because I'm going to do a 3D green type of pattern. I feel like it'll look real cool. I, no, instead of green, I'll do blue. How about that? I'll do a blue pattern, not green. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I've really been, I've been, but I've been painting a lot more with blue. I like how it turns out, and so instead of green, like the fluorescent green, I'm just gonna use blue. I'll go into my sapphire blue and uh, uh, oh, what's the other color? Um, oh shoot, what the heck is the color? I don't even remember what the color is. It's like a ocean blue, it's a light blue. I don't remember what it's called though. Um, if you want to find any of these lures I custom paint, you can find them on Facebook, at Ridge Custom Tackle. I have them on there. And uh, every once in a while, so far I've been doing every month on this channel, I'll do a giveaway. And uh, normally it is uh, some of my custom painted lures. So if you want a champ, to get some lures, make sure you're subscribed. Or if you want to purchase some to ensure that you get them, you can check out my Facebook page at Ridge Custom Tackle 2020. I have all sorts of different patterns on my Facebook page. And we're just a grown business, alright? 
Now, the problem about getting stenciling on, especially these uh, S cranks, they can be a pain in the rear end. Shoot. And if any of you ever decide to get into wear painting, hit me up or like just let me know. And maybe I can give you some tips from what I know. Or if you don't want tips from me, <laughs> just listen to this one tip I gotta give you, alright? And it, it, to get more tips, but not from me, go check out Jekyll. Like, Je I think it's Jekyll Productions on YouTube or Jekyll Bates on Facebook. On YouTube, she does a lot, and I've learned a lot from her. If you would like to learn how to paint crankbaits and little tips and tricks and you know stuff like that <clears throat> alright well, what I'm gonna do now make sure my mixing stick is cleaned off I'm gonna get white I'm gonna spray white over top of the black and uh I'm doing this so that I can spray my blue on it afterwards and it actually be able to, well, for you to actually be able to see it. If I sprayed blue directly onto that, it, it wouldn't go too well. Er, yes sir. Now, you want to spray it from the front of the crankbait and back so that you get as much of the black to come through as possible. I need to get, I don't remember what the ribbon's called, but I need to get it so I can do like bigger spaces instead of like real small like what I'm doing. So I feel like it looks really nice and uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. look like that over top of the black uh, it looks like a lot of blacks showing but that's actually just uh, the stencil I have black on it already because I've sprayed black on it and uh, it doesn't really matter it's not gonna affect the bait after I spray this it's gonna be white not black so Who's watching the stream right now? Who's watching? If you have a if you have a Google account or YouTube account, can you let me know who's watching? I'd, I'd like to know. Show you what I got rock all right okay that's what we got so far I'm gonna put the stenciling back on and because I took it off what it's gonna do is it is going to give it well how can I explain it I could have left it on and made a single type of thing but I want there to be white and black lines in it along with the blue and I've never tried this before I could be screwing it up and then I'll have to repaint it but this is, all, uh, this is how you get good patterns uh, when you're painting you just have to try new things 
see what works for you. To be honest, this exact pattern I'm doing might not work at all, but... All of my big money baits that I've gotten paid $15 plus for has been doing this exact thing right here, just experimenting. I'm a heat dry out. Frick. I'm drying it real quick. Make sure the paint is nice and dry so it doesn't smear. And that there is good. <clears throat> So what I'm gonna do is clean this up real quick. Do you make I can't see, hold on. Oh she Do you make lures yourself or do you get bullying? We'll do that. Alright, uh oh, oh, oh crap, we gotta turn around. There we go, sorry. Uh I buy my blanks, but uh, shoot, where's my tripod not walking? All right, there we go. Yeah, I buy my blanks. Um, I buy them from multiple places. I might get them Cedar Run Outdoors, uh, or Predator Bass Baits, or Unpaid, uh, what is it, CrankbaitBlanks.com, something like that, or Sugar Tit, uh. Custom lures, I think, is what it's called. I'm trying to get. There we are. Yeah, I'm just it, wherever you know. But yeah, I even thought about trying to make uh, bladed jigs or bass jigs thought about making them I'll probably have to figure out a website that sells all the stuff I'd need because I don't know I don't know where to get them from I looked at Cedar Run Outdoors they have some stuff like they have blades and whatnot but they don't have the actual like jig heads I need so you know I'm just kind of going with the flow, you know. And whatever I said, doing random patterns and whatnot is how I get my big money lawyers. I mean, as example, I made, oh, well, I think it was a uh, 1.5 DD. I only have a couple blanks left over here. Oh, look at that. Okay, here we are. One of these right here. And uh, sold one of these for fifteen dollars with my golden gill pattern on it. I haven't made any golden gill patterns recently because I've been trying to work with new pattern. But uh, yeah, my golden gill pattern. I sold one of those for fifteen dollars, and just the lot that goes into it right here this is one I painted earlier. Can't really see. I'm not really sure about that one. I might just put it in my own tackle box. I mean, this pattern here, I've also sold this pattern for, I think it was $12 I sold it for. Um, it's a good pattern, but uh, what happened with this crankbait, because I only sell my baits, like if they're perfect. The reason I won't sell this one is I repainted over another one. Too much heat got to the bill and the bill ended up being bent. And I don't want to sell that. I mean, it worked just fine, but I don't want to sell that. So what I'll do, I'll clear coat it and everything, put it in my own tackle box and, you know. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna compare this bait and I'm gonna get another one. I'm gonna do the same exact design 
but instead of taking this off, I'm just going to keep it on to see what difference it makes in the date, see which one's better. And whichever one I like better, I will sell. If I don't like either one of them, I'll just repaint them. What you say there? That's where I get some of my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What, do you paint, uh, do you ever paint, do you paint crankbaits or do you do jigs or anything? What do you do? Probably crankbaits, but, mm. And one thing I'll tell you. Look at first. Wait, what? So I get some more. I do. Oh, you do everything. Really? Interesting. Yeah, uh. I've been thinking about doing more make coolers out of wood. Yeah, I actually did that one time. It's actually what kind of inspired me to make my own wares. I can get it out. It's my very first war ever made. I made it, I carved it from wood. It, it actually floats and everything. It's a top water, it's like a top water spook. I don't really know what I was doing when I made it. But I went and got a stick out of the yard, carved it, and I was like, boom. And I didn't have split rings or anything. Cranks, yeah. Hey man. How long does it take you to make, how long does it take you to make a, like a small crankbait, or just whatever, how long does it take you to make it? Because it sounds interesting. Because <clears throat> I'm going to show you. I'll show you the first lure I ever made very first lure. I have it here in my fishing box here. This is where I keep lures I will never use, never sell, anything like that. These are my special lures in here. Actually, these are some of the first crankbaits I ever airbrushed. They're all mess up though. Ow. Right there was a purge pattern, one of the very first patterns I ever did. I have the whole day. I gotta scoot this over. Myself, maybe myself, I could have the clear coat end of the day. Yeah. Uh, I use KBS, so it takes 24 hours just to like dry to where it won't mess up, and then if you give it another day, it'll work real nice. Um, when you car, do you use, uh, what kind of wood do you use? Do you use balsa? Balsa, whatever, yeah. Uh, what type of wood do you use? Because I know there's a couple different ones you can use. Most people use balsa from what I've heard. And what do you use to carve it? Do you use like a some sort of carving knife? Or do you have a... Uh, oh, it, what's it called? It's like a jigsaw machine, you know? I don't know what it's called though. I'll need to put it in here. Some of these lures I have in here, though, are from the four of the 1960s, the yeah, balsa and basswood. Yeah, that was the other wood. Yeah. <clears throat> but right here, man. Very first lure ever, ever made. I made this a while ago. Was that guy right there. But, uh... <laughs> I'll keep that whenever I'm older. I'll look at that and be like, that's what got me inspired into all this, you know? Carving knife and general tool. Yeah. Uh, before, I'm sure. I'll get right back to this in a minute. I want to show you. I want to show you this real quick. Wait. Oh, what's up, NRK Fishing? I want you guys to guess. Do you guys know what lure this is? I'll tell you. It's from before the 1960s. Do you know what lure this is? Or like what it does. I'm sure you do if you know anything about fishing, like older lures and whatnot. 
I also have a box of really old things in there. Right. I'm getting distracted. I need to get back to painting. Uh, well, what I showed, it's actually a, a topwater popper, is what it was. I also do have a really old rattler. It's not 1960s, but it's an old topwater rattler. Um, I also have an old jitterbug, too. And I have other baits. Oh, I think it's what? What is it called? I I have a. Uh, is it a bucktail? Or something. I want to get it out real quick. I'm getting distracted, but whatever. I got a box of old spinners, but uh, these here are real interesting. These are 1960s. I'd have to say these are for wall, like you got the spin spinner, and then you got your hook in the back. That's where you'd put your leech or your worm or minnow or whatever. Pull this out again. one more time. Here it is. I got this guy right here. This is 1960s. You might know. Aren't these called bucktails right here? Because I'm not into these. I, I won't use them. But I think that's called a bucktail. If, if I'm right or wrong. It's a really old war. Actually put all that away. <clears throat> Alright, where's my there it is? But like I said, I'm going to spray the other crankbait pretty much the same way, but I'm going to do a little bit different. Oh, also, when you make your own baits, do you, uh, oh, do you, do you airbrush them or do you paint on or you spray paint? How do you paint your lures? I don't think I reduced it enough, but... By the way, if you're looking for a lure part, oh man, I have it in my tripod backwards so I can see what you guys say, but I can't see for crap. By the way, if you look for parts to make jigs for uh, lure parts online.com, he's hand painting. Yeah, I mean hand painting. If you're if you are actually good at it, I mean you probably make it look real good. And uh, thanks for letting me know about, I'll have to watch the video, or the live stream after I end it. And I'll, I'll probably go look at that website. Oh, Alright, that's good. Because I thought about, you know, like I said, I thought about making them. Just, uh, don't know. You know, just, I don't know, I need to look at prices, see what I can sell for, see what will sell. Because everything I make, I put sell unless uh, I mess it up, and then I put it in my tackle box and call it a day.
can probably help if I loosen in my valve uh, on the back of the airbrush. Probably help paint come out a little bit better. Oh yeah. Man. If you ever have problems with getting paint from the airbrush, either one you got a cog or two, you might want to unscrew your valve a little bit. Probably help. Either that or turn up your pressure, which my pressure. Uh, I keep my pressure pretty high. Higher than it should be is what I keep my pressure. Like I keep it way, way higher than it should be. <coughs> but for how I paint, I don't paint normally. I paint like a different way. And it, it, it just, it, that's how I do it. And uh, just to show you what I've been painting. For one customer I had, he wanted a blue craw. I painted this blue craw here on a little John K.O. And this perch pattern on an F prank. <clears throat> and the thing is, you know, you could do those patterns any color. It doesn't have to be a blue craw or a red craw. I could do a purple craw, green craw, any craw. Baby craw. I'll say, uh, Benjamin, are you entered in my giveaway? Is that how you, uh, found the channel? Yeah, the fish brain one. Yeah, the one I posted on fish brain. Uh, you know, yeah, that one. The only one that's up right now. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I did that giveaway, mainly, you know, monthly giveaway. And, uh, road to 200, you know what I mean? What I plan to do, I'll, I'll do videos, uh, making, you know, live streams of me making lures and everything. But what I plan to do at some point is to do some fishing videos. If I ever go back up to, uh, Pennsylvania, I'll show you how to catch some bass on live bluegill. Big ones, too, fight fish them. It's fun. About a minute to dry. Actually, I'm gonna put this one down. I'll do I'll do this one later. I just wanna work. I should have just did the same pattern I wanted to do, but I went sidetracked and did that. But I'm just gonna try and stay focused right here on this. Ugh. What a lot of people don't understand is like all the work it takes to like put into a fishing lure. Like I buy my blanks. I mean. For someone like you to make your own work, I don't know if you sell them or anything, but like all that work that would go into them, like even me just buying the blanks and painting them, it takes me over 24 hours. It probably takes me to get one bait done, probably 28 hours total. And that's to like paint it, clear coat it, you know, make sure it'll work right. I have to take my X-Acto knife, go through, cut a bunch of stuff, like cut off clear coats that's in the, oh, what you call them, like the rings, you know, split rings, hooks, and yeah, there's a bunch that goes into it.
yeah. For the giveaway, at this rate, I don't, I probably already said this, but at this rate, it looks like we're only going to be able to give one lure away, sadly. I was originally planning on giving all three lures away, because I thought we could really hit 100 likes, because one time I did a giveaway. Man, just like that, we got, what, we got like 80 likes on it. We, I thought, actually no, not thought, I know we could do better than what we did. But I don't want to be... I don't want to be somebody that just goes like through fish brain or through social media and just like oh uh giveaway here giveaway here you know subscribe I, i'm not i don't beg for subscribers and whatnot but for my giveaway to be successful i, I had to post something about it so i posted one time i might post one more towards the end of the giveaway just to be like hey guys it's about to end if you want to join then And I just, I started painting these lures not too long ago, just a couple months ago. We started back in 2020. That's when we started making. And I went from painting on pretty much a basement floor to painting here at a big table. I'm, my table's big enough to fit everything that I have. just nice to know and then like any bet you got you know pay it off and then and then you're golden I don't know I'd... that white is really uh really thin I don't know I'm gonna try it still I'll tell you, I don't know what part of the like U.S. you live in, and if you even live in the U.S., which, um, yeah, but, uh, there's somebody on there named B.C. Clark, Bass Fish and Brian, on Fish Brain. He got locked out of his account. If you want to support him, see his fish catches or anything, if you've ever seen him, you can find him on YouTube at Guy with the GoPro Fishing Show. He does some quality, quality videos. And he uh, he's gonna start doing giveaways monthly. Uh, his next giveaway, I think it's gonna be coming up soon because he just made a video about it like two hours ago. Uh, he's in Florida right now. He said, "All I know is it mentioned giveaway, and he's gonna be giving away a rod." He said, "Last giveaway he did, uh, it was a, a box of fishing lures." If you've looked at my profile on Fish Brain, uh, you've probably seen the post 
that I made about it. I hope he, re I really hope he does the good. And he actually lives not too far from me. I'm gonna meet up with him and uh, I'm gonna give him some custom wars and whatnot, you know? I, I, I wanna take that off so bad, but I know I'm not doing that. And if you're wondering what kind of airbrush I'm using, I'm just using a master airbrush. You can find them on Amazon. Not that expensive. If you're looking for a cheap airbrush, uh, the air compressor I'm using though, it came in, in, like it was like an airbrush kit. I got it and an airbrush for ninety dollars on Amazon. It, it's a uh, it. There's a lot of like starter airbrush kits on there that come with a compressor and an airbrush. and stuff um I mean I'm pretty into it right now and I still need a lot um I don't even use airbrush paints I use normal acrylic paints which you can get from Hobby Lobby anywhere from 88 cents to two dollars and that's why I mix a bunch of them up I actually only have one airbrush paint which is I'll tell you I'll show you real quick I'll compare them This right here is an 88 cent paint. That's my yellow I use. If I want it to be a dark yellow, I just add a little bit of orange. But then right here is a pearlized uh, airbrush paint. That's five dollars. And if you want to get it online, if you get, cause I was gonna buy Kratex from uh, Kratex Colors, and for two paints it was gonna be like 22 bucks, and that's including shipping. And I was like, I'll just go over to, I'll, I'll just go over to Hobby Lobby, get them for five bucks a piece. Um, but I'd say with everything I have, I can't tell you the exact price, but you need, I'm, well, I'm just going to round it up to probably $400. I got into it, $400, $500. Because uh, the compressor I have, $90 compressor, $30 airbrush, $30 clear coat, and I have two things of clear coat. $60 in a clear coat. I have clear coat thinner and cleaner. Um, you gotta get your packaging, your packaging for shipping, your boxes, anything like that. Um, you have to get your split rings, hooks, blanks, tape, uh, paint. You gotta get a bunch of stuff. It's a couple hundred bucks to get the whole setup. And I mean, I'm on a table right now that's probably like a $60 table. So there's a lot that goes into it and if you're gonna buy blanks like if you ever want to paint them or whatever if you buy them I recommend if you don't make them yourself or know anybody that sells them really cheap get them from Cedar Run Outdoors They normally sell their crankbait blanks for real cheap or uh, Sugar Tit uh, Custom Lures I believe it's called on there they sell a bunch of like swim baits and crank baits were pretty cheap. You can get like the rat wake baits, rat lures, uh you get hammerhead shark swim baits, alligator gar swim baits, more right eel swim just a whole bunch. There's a lot you can do. Like if you paint crank baits, it's not just like here you get a small crank bait, paint it done. You can make your own, you can buy them, you can carve like you can do everything. It's just like amazing how much you can really do. And there's a lot of work that goes into it. Like I, I've been painting and doing lures all day since probably, I'd say two o'clock I've been doing this for. And I'm going on, it, it's 1121 right now. So, uh, I've been doing this for a while. What was the website called? Uh, 
It's Cedar Run Outdoors. I can type it for you, I believe. Let me pull my phone down. Where's autocorrect is spacing it out. Alright, I left a message. I don't I think it to send. I don't know if it sent. Oh, Matt sent, hold on. Alright, yeah, you can. Um, there's a whole lot on there. Or if you want to see all the really cool, the, like the the really cool blanks I was talking about, it's called Sugar Tip Custom Lures, I believe it is, a custom bait on. Oh, that's their website. And that's they have all the really cool stuff. Cedar Runs just where, like, your everyday, uh, you know. The cheaper crankbaits you got. If you want to get the more expensive, like cooler one that is going to be on the sugar tip. But if you're just starting out new or something, you definitely want to go for Cedar Run. Also in Cedar Run, they don't just have like crankbait blanks, they have stuff for jigs, spinnerbaits, buzzbaits, uh, the whole nine yards. You can buy Z-Man stuff on there, Trocar, uh, Mustad, you can, like they sell actual like baits on there too. They have a whole bunch of everything. Like I said earlier in the video, what you want to do for this pattern is spray front, back. Like that. Clear that out real quick. And uh, hockey, if you're not entered, I, or if you don't know about it, I have a giveaway going on too, just if you're interested. I'm giving away custom, one of my custom awards if you're interested in getting it, or attempting to get it, you know. And uh, if, you, if you are entered or you want to enter, uh, below 50 likes, I'm only giving a 2.5 square bill away. If I get 50 likes, then I'm giving a uh, little John away. 100, I'm giving an S crank away. Like, if so, if I get 50 likes over uh, wins the giveaway, we'll get two baits. So if you if you're entered or anything, you got friends who fish or whatever, let them know about it, man. If you if you win, you'll get. What fourteen dollars worth of you get? You got two crankbaits. That's fourteen dollars worth. No, it's not because it's fifteen dollars worth. Yeah, fifteen dollars worth. And I sell my bits for cheap too, especially custom painted. Some people will paint like a small crankbait, man. And they'll sell it for eighteen dollars, and I'm like, damn! It, 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 it's crazy. It really is.
All three look thick. Yeah. And I mean, those are just like some of my basic patterns. Uh, I do some really cool patterns too. We'll see how it looks. I don't know. This might be a new seller. Who knows? Hmm. I don't know. You like that? That's all I have so far. I can paint more onto it. Hmm. I mean... Like if I get a dark blue, oh, no, I, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, it's like, I've done that specific pattern before, sort of, I'm gonna do, uh, oh, I, on my, uh, Facebook page, I only made one of them, it was a topwater walking bait, I called it the, the hydro walker, it's, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretty much copy that pattern I did before, and I mean, it was a nice bait, and I mean, uh, what, second day? Well, I painted the first day, sold it the second day. Let me just air dry this real quick. <clears throat> this is what helps, man. When you've got a heater in your room, like, it's called a Mr. Heater, but if you have it in your room, and you're painting paint, painting base. All you gotta do is walk right over here, hold it over. It'll dry the paint real fast. But you gotta be careful with it, because if you hold it over it for too long or something, it'll melt your, it'll melt your bait, because your bait is plastic or some other sort of resin, and it won't go too well for you. A little bit more on the top. I'll do, I'll get my dark blue, my sapphire, I think it's called, what's it called? I don't know, it's called, it's called ultra, yeah, ultra, ultra marine, I can't talk, it's called ultra marine. What I'm thinking about doing is painting the top. I'm gonna paint the top of it, uh, blue. And most people, like, you can, there's videos of people painting crankbaits and whatnot on YouTube. They normally have their stuff planned out. No, I'm just out here free painting. I'm mainly doing the live because I was painting crankbaits anyways. I was like, Oh, whatever, I'll do it. I came in won't hurt. I was like, why not? Let's get her. I want this dark blue to be a little bit thicker, though. Because I was spraying it earlier when I was doing my blue crawl patterns. And if you have that kind of really, uh, really thin, it, it sprays really weird. I don't know why. But it does not spray very nicely you gotta spray very little yeah like that it it does not here i'll spray it on my hand you get a really light dusting of it and uh 
not really the best uh, thing you want. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of it, to be honest with you. I might repaint that a different color. Because, uh, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. But, this is how you come up with the patterns. You, you just gotta practice. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just practicing, trying new stuff. Anyone who is successful at crankbait painting, uh, you know, might look better than my angle. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably from your angle, but my angle, not very good. But Marling, though, he makes some fire crankbaits, not gonna lie. What, do you make your own baits, or are you thinking about doing it? Because if you don't do it yet, and you want to, I could give you some, I could give you some tips. And I'll also let you guys know, I don't know if you know about him, but uh, there's a guy who makes, uh, really paints his lures. Uh, I mean, make them for yourself, sell them, whatever. But I was originally, I'm originally being mentored by, uh, well his uh, lawyer company is called line out locked uh, he he's pretty good at it and he partners with a bunch of like other companies he'll make just like a bullshad bluegill I don't know what you'd call it and, and sell it for a hundred bucks like I went to his place one time and that's whenever I saw his workshop and uh, like that's one place I wish I could go back to that's back before I even knew anything about painting. And I feel like if I were to go back, I could learn so much more. That's why I wish I could go back, but I don't really want to drive over an hour. Go somewhere. I have been making my own stuff for like six months. Yeah, um, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you hand paint or spray paint, but yeah, airbrushing, you can definitely make it look a lot better. It, it definitely takes practice. Like, you can't just, like, be like, okay, here we go and start painting. I mean, I almost did that, but, I mean, I still make mistakes to this day. It, it, it just, it, you might not think it's very difficult, but really, you're going to mess up, and you can't be like, oh, this is too difficult, I'm gonna go back to, like, hand painting or something. Just don't give up on it. If it's really what you want to do, if you really want to make your own lawyer, just keep going through with it. If you, like, if you put your money into something, that's not, like, you don't want to give up on that, I'm telling you. Like, if you spend, like, if I spent $500 on all this or something, we'll just say that. I don't just want to like give up and that be a waste of money. And then if I were to sell it, be able to sell it for the whole setup for like 150, 200 bucks, it just wouldn't be worth it. So make sure, I'm just saying, if you're gonna 
air like if you're gonna buy the airbrush with your own money and everything make sure to commit to it and just it's not the easiest thing especially if you don't use actual airbrush paint you gotta learn how thick the paint needs to be how thin the paint needs to be or whatever you need to learn mixing your paints if you get like Kratex uh, airbrush paint or uh, you can get testers anything like that then it'll you can put it right in your brush it'll spray and uh it just you, you just gotta figure it out yourself you can get tips from people but from what i've learned you just gotta figure it out on your own pretty much what i do i get tips from other people and put it into my own like my own perspective you know i do my own thing And I've been, you said you've been painting for like six months now. I, to be honest, I haven't even been painting that long. I've been painting less than that. I'm gonna plug this in now, or it's gonna die on me. But yeah, it just, it takes practice. If you're gonna do it, don't give up on it. Keep trying. If you need help, I got you. And uh, if you get an airbrush, I recommend don't buy the stuff separately. Don't buy the cheaper stuff necessarily. Buy about $90-$100 airbrush kit on Amazon if you're looking for a good compressor. The airbrush though in those kits, you might need to buy another one. But it should work for a while as long as you keep it clean. It, it should work just fine. And I mean, just painting your baits, it takes a while. Like, if I were to speed through it, it'd take me at least, like at the very least, 30 minutes just to get the painting done. But to get the whole bait done, like if I were to non-stop work on it, it'd take me probably anywhere from, actually it'd probably take me 28 hours for me to normally get the bait done. And I'll say, if you're going to get an airbrush, there's a couple things you need. If you don't have, like, a basement sink or anything to rinse out your airbrush at, at first, you're going to have to get yourself a box. Mine's just full of paper towels, but you can do newspapers or whatever. Newspapers probably work better, to be honest with you. But you need to get yourself a box with all that. There's a lot that you I'm going to do another crawl pattern. This time I'm going to do, ooh, I think I'm gonna do a green, a green crawl. The good thing is I have all the green I could need. What I'm gonna use right here, light green, dark green. Of the lid, but yeah, on this green crawl I'm doing, 
I'm gonna give it a light green belly, dark green sides, and I'm doing it on the Little John KO blank. And this is one of the crankbaits. You really wanna let the base coat dry. But because I'm doing it on the bottom, I'm just gonna do it more the lazy way and just kind of spray it. And, uh, <laughs> you really, if you're really trying to do your best on it, you probably shouldn't be doing that. But if it turns out good, then it's good for me. If not, then I'll either repaint it or put it in my own pack box. And just any way you do it, just practice. <laughs> Give it a nice light green belly. On the camera, it almost looks white. But that's what we do. Oh, man. And if you guys want to see any video, like what videos do you guys want to see? Because I mean, you can go on my channel. You see, I have like 196 subscribers, but then I only have uh, like four videos now. I, I used to have over a hundred videos, but I deleted all of my videos to start out fresh. And, uh, what, do you want to see, like, painting tutorials, just live streams like this, Q&A type stuff, uh, do you want to see actually fishing, do you want to see war reviews, mystery tackle box stuff, like, what do you want to see? Does that mean... If I got the time on my hands, I can do whatever. If you want to see me go jump in the freezing cold river, I mean. couple with go fishing with them. Alright, I can do that. It's not very difficult to do. Um, man, I mean, I'm trying to think where could I go. I mean, I could go down the river. Uh, if I if I got a John boat or something or a kayak, I could probably go along. Eh, I might be able to get some smallmouth. What if I were to do that recently? I'd have to go for either Sauger or Walleye, and uh, I'd have to try to get Sauger or Walleye, and with a lot of my baits it might be pretty difficult, the only baits I'd probably be able to use for them is either Flatline Jerk Bait or my 1.5 DDs. Oh actually, no, the Little Johns could work, yeah. Um. Yeah, I'd be interested in doing that, yeah. And what I even what I can even do, I don't know if you were in the stream when I said this, but uh, uh, if I ever get back up to Pennsylvania soon, I should this summer at some point, I can record uh how like to show you guys how to catch bass on live bluegill in a pond. You in the pond up there, you can sight fish them. It's really cool. Like, you can see the bass, you put it, you catch a bluegill, you put it on your hook, right? You can toss it out in front of them, you can watch them eat it. And just, you, it's actually the same pond. In my one video, I caught a bass on a crayfish. That is the same pond. You can, you can sight fish, but whenever I caught him on that crayfish, I actually didn't see him eat it. Because it was a bit deeper out there. But it, it's a really cool pond. <laughs> um yeah and we're right at 200 guys 200 sub and I've been going at this what three years now and probably a year and a half of that I haven't even uploaded which is great <laughs> great mm-hmm 
If you have any questions about the crankbaits, though, I'm willing to answer. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm chilling. If you have any questions about anything, I got you. Once I get the sun, I'll show you what I'll do next, alright? Oh, it's probably getting a bit rattly for you guys. I need to take that off my compressor. <laughs> Um, let me get this rinsed out, and this is probably the best part about the bait. I'll show you. And it doesn't actually involve the airbrush. I'm going to take a paintbrush, and I'm going to do a splatter effect with the paintbrush. You can do it with the airbrush, but I like it better with the paintbrush because of how you can spread it out and you can make more dots with it. And another thing with your airbrush, you want to make sure you have it cleaned out really well because if you don't get all the one color out and you spray again, it, it mixes colors and I'm sure you can imagine that. Like if you have black in it and then you put white in it, you're going to spray gray. Alright. Now this is what I'm going to do. Paintbrush. Watch, let me show you. See? Green, light green belly. I'm going to get my paintbrush, I'm going to dip it in my white paint, move some stuff away, and I'm going to like tap on my airbrush, there we go, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to tilt my crankbait, I'm going to put the brush over it and just tap it, and what it's going to do, it's going to give it dots on it like that, it might not look like much now but wait till I spray the black on it the black is what's gonna make it look like a crayfish but a green crayfish is a bit what zombie like not very natural but that's kind of the point of what I'm going for I'm going for something a bit different another thing is you want to rinse out your brush because if your brush it's stiff from paint drying in it. It won't flick as well. Alright. Alright, that should be drying here shortly. What I do, I gotta get my black cup, black paint open oh rip to the hand guy hold on let me see what you said here might you hit up ask for the P.O. box to send you stuff you gotta have fun like painting with wait yeah you might hit up and ask for the P.O. box to send stuff to go okay yeah i'll message you on fish brand and uh if you want to send me stuff if you i mean whatever you're gonna send i don't care if you send blanks or something i'll paint them i'm and i'll if you want i'll record i'll record a video on it or just whatever man i got you i'll even make a video thanking you because anything like that is just really nice people going out of their way to send stuff 
it just I find it really nice. The guy with the GoPro fishing show on YouTube, he even mentioned getting me a birthday lures, and I thought that was really nice. And I'm actually gonna meet up with them and meet them in person too. And I'm just <laughs> I'm excited. But yeah, see ya. Hopefully you join uh, another stream. Hopefully you stick with the channel. And, uh, yeah. You have a good night. dry my bait real quick. I want to make sure I don't smear any paint. Mm -hmm. The hardest part with these little John K.O.'s I would have to say is cutting your eye. I have these eyes from Predator Bass Baits or uh, on PennyCrankBaits.com. I don't know if they're all like that difficult to cut, but I'm just uh, cutting crankbait eyes not an easy thing to do. All right, but to get the crayfish pen, I'm gonna do this is my stencil right here. Uh, all of my stencils I hand cut besides stuff like you know. Uh, scale pattern and stuff like that. Everything I cut myself. You want to place your stencil on your bait right where you want it. You got to keep it still. That guy I think I got my black a little bit too, uh, he's really going at it. Oh, rip guy, I've never messed one of these up yet, are you serious? No, oh, man, don't do this to me. I've never messed one of these up before. I guess there's a first time for everything. I'm gonna keep on painting though for you guys. This is what I mean, it takes practice. How I messed up is my black is way too thin. It is way too thin and I, I'd never mess up. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. But I am not doing very well at all. You know, boom. Boom. Just fine. I shouldn't have been babying the airbrush. I should have just painted it. It, it would have been fine. Same spot. Boom. I'll show you what I did wrong. That right there is how it should look. It should look just like that. But what? And then you can look at that side. I mean, it's correct. The side up here near the top, you can see paint got out. And I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to fix that. I mean, if I could get a Q-tip, I might be able to get it done, but. I don't think it's going to work for me, guys. But 
that's what it'll look like. A really nice lures, to be honest with you. I can't believe I messed that up. Come on, man. I can't believe myself. That, that, that is a rookie mistake. Rookie. Not very happy about that at all. Because if I don't, if I, like, if I were to not repaint that, which I think I'm going to repaint it, that's money down the drain, pretty much. I, I mean, not necessarily, though. It's me getting fishing lures for my own tackle box. So I guess it would work just fine, but still. What else I got here? Oh. All of these, well, here on top, these are all going somewhere besides this. I'm going to repaint that. But right here, this lure right here is going to a customer. A customer. Uh, it's a flatline jerk bait. White base coat, purple with a pattern over it. And black, very simple pattern. Very effective. Very bright. I have this one here. The same person's buying here is my blue craw on the little John KO. I'm a, I'm actually I really like that pattern. The green I really like the green too, but I messed it up. I'm gonna have to go through probably tomorrow. Yeah, it, it is probably tomorrow though. I'll go back through repaint a green one if you guys want to stream tomorrow i can do it tomorrow if you want if i'm not busy i will but i'll go back through i'll probably make a green one uh, uh, that crawl pattern i'll redo it and then i might make a pink one or a purple one which i feel like would also be really cool um i already i have a red one in the box actually but before i get there i'll show you this one here is the one i'm giving away for the giveaway if I get to 100 likes, but we'll see if we get there. I don't know. We'll see. I'm also selling that one on Bass Baits Buy and Sell on Facebook. You, you can find it on there. I'm selling that exact pattern. I'm also selling this one on there. Another very simple pattern. But sometimes the simple ones are most effective. I painted painted this lure here for myself. It's just a little, little John gold metallic color thought it might be good in the river around here and then another one I'm giving away for the giveaway 2.5 I have two of those I also have green ones painted uh not the green actually not the green the holographic shows through a lot better on I also have a ridge shad pattern which I really like that pattern a bit darker but it has a lot of detail to it. I have my my crappie pattern. I have confetti. I have this pattern here. This one is kind of like an off-brand of a really popular pattern. I have my zombie gill pattern. I, I'm a fan of that pattern. Uh, the way I made this one, because I said earlier, sometimes the best way to come up with uh, designs is just by doing it and testing new things. I was originally going to make a pump, uh, yeah, pumpkin seed, and it ended up later on. I changed my mind and decided to make this one here, and I call it my zombie gear. And then I have more flatline jerk baits, they're see-through, and right here. 
real tank up. I have my red little John KO pink bait on and just to show you I have these top water walking baits. And that's everything I have made right now. Because it might not look like a whole lot, but pretty much as soon as I make it, I sell it. midnight it's actually past midnight um i'm gonna be ending the stream real quick though if you stay here i'll show you if you're interested in this i'm gonna go back through my old fishing these are old fishing lures from like 1960s i'm opening up uh, a spinner box here i i don't know what any of these are here's one of them it's like a little trout pattern one. And there's another one in here. That guy. Now, I don't know what any of these are called. I bet you they're worth some big money. This one here, that looks like a Joe's Fly. Oh, it's because it is a Joe's Fly. Look at that. Huh. It's an old one. I don't know how much money those will be worth one day. But you're probably not really going to care about this. I'll show you this though. Right here is an old topwater mouse lure. That's an old, old bait. Topwater pop, like 19, before the 1960s topwater popper. Right here's an old jitterbug. These ones here, cream. What? Oh, this is like nothing what cream makes today. These are really old cream ones from like 1960s. But there, it's like a. I don't even know what you call that. It's called a. It's a well, it's a reusable rig. Yeah, that popper is ancient. I mean, you know it's old. You know how if you have a penny like the copper on it, it'll get that color. I wonder if there's like copper in this or if just it's corrosion, but it's got like the corrosion on it. And then we have some really old uh, spoons. Isn't that, I think that red one's called a daredevil. All right, there's one. And then right here is Oh, it's some sort of, it looks like a diver. What's it called? Mm, thin, thin, U.S. patent. Uh, I don't know. I think it's called a thin, thin. But it, that's it right there. Old war. And then I have this here. I believe it's an old bucktail. 1960s. Well, I'm gonna say 1960s because we know like the latest this stuff came out was 1967 like, or something or 63 is what it was most of it's before that though but right there old bucktail and all of this actually belonged it'd be my great great grandpa is what all this belonged to And then I have another like multi-rig thing here. Looks like it'd be for walleye. I'm sure it says on here it's got a bunch of stuff. Mm. It says it's deadly for all fish. <laughs> uh, another daredevil spoon. And then I've got the old fishing knife. But I got, I got some old stuff. And then I got a freaking hook that looks like that. But 
all right uh thank you to everyone who joined into the stream i will see you guys hopefully in another stream if you ever see me live come hop in i'm always down to talk it always makes me happy seeing people join knowing that i'm not just talking to myself because uh if you're streaming and there's no one in your stream i mean I'm already talking to myself, technically nobody's here besides you and stream, but I'm not like face to face. So just having people join is nice. See ya in the next one though. Oh shoot. Peace.